this contest in the very exciting flyweight division. And first to the cage is Carl Harrison, representing the UTC and carrying a three and three record. He is 30 years of age. Been training alongside Vaughan Lee, who is a southpaw, very much like his opponent. Most of his wins are by ground and pound, but Harrison is well-rounded as a fighter. He's been working a lot more on his boxing, which is something that he's looking to showcase tonight. In fact, Harrison used to compete in boxing before his path led him into mixed martial arts. The UTC, a gym that a lot of people are talking about at the minute, not just because of the success, excuse me, of Vaughan Lee, but because of the great crop of youngsters that are coming out of there. You've got guys like Leon Edwards. As you can see in his corner there, you've got middleweight Yannick Bahati. A great team of really, really exciting youngsters. A real good crop of talent over there at UTC. And the success, as you talked about, that Vaughan Lee's had with his mixed martial arts career has really served as a, as a catalyst for those guys in that gym because they're seeing now what can be attained if they're really Put their, put their minds to it with the great facilities that they've got. A lot of good guys coming out of UTC, as I said, and Carl Harrison's just one of them. is G.I. Joe Lawrence representing Team Ippon and he comes with a 3-2 and two record and is 27 years of age. So a student of the judoka Jeff Lawson, southpaw fighter, he lost to Mark Handley in his last outing and responded with increasing intensity of his training. He's predicting a war tonight, really stepped things up with his strength and conditioning regime with Kane Edwards, sorry Kane Evans using the training mask actually which is something which has had mixed reviews we'll see how it works out for him tonight but he does want to make a move towards taking a title and he does like it here at shock and awe we talked about that last fight that he had against Mark Canley. I was actually fortunate enough to commentate that fight. And for me, Lawrence never really got out of the blocks there. And he certainly didn't show the skills and abilities that he has in abundance. On his day, this man is a very tough ask for any would-be flyweight. And Carl Harrison is a very good test for Joe Lawrence at this point in his career. A real pivotal point almost, because it's, it's when fighters are presented with adversity so often that we see as, as Lawrence comes in there. Uh, Huge rapturous applause here, really making the most out of his entrance, really enjoying it. I have to say, it's a stark contrast to how he is as a, as a personality. He's so reserved. You know, I had a, had a chat with him earlier on, and he was just very calm, very collected. But yet we just saw there, as soon as he hit the bright lights, he exploded with a flurry of punches, clearly looking to get this one underway. A very, very exciting bout in the flyweight division. the tail of the tape in this scintillating flyweight contest sees Carl Harrison in the blue shorts representing the UTC and G.I. Joe Lawrence in the black trunks representing Ippon MMA Andy Walker our referee for this contest scheduled for three five minute rounds I love flyweight action so much value in these guys the technical stuff is normally on point, and I don't doubt it's going to be there this evening. If you're a fan of the lighter weights, John, you've certainly come to the right show. Absolutely right. A lot more opportunities for flyweight fighters as well now, which is great to see. 
Harrison coming forward, trying to land a quick combination. Lightning fast punches. Lawrence responds and looks to defend the single. Harrison now pushing in, gets his man up and down. Harrison tight on the double there. Lawrence not willing to give up the scramble just yet. Gets an overhook, trying to get the whizzer in to get back to his feet. Lots of pressure from the head and the shoulder from Harrison. Oh, really nicely done by Lawrence to get back to his feet. Such a pace for the flyweights. Good level change by Harrison. In on a single, trying to turn the corner, switch into a double. We're really going to earn our money tonight, Ben. So much to call. Fast as lightning, as you might expect from these guys. They've got one speed, and that's 100 miles an hour. Nice elbow over the top. Turn that left elbow to cut down across Lawrence's head. Looking to get some posture. Harrison looking to arc in with those elbows. Yeah, really favouring elbow strikes and these close exchanges, and he's getting through with a couple. That one specifically sounded very, very heavy. And hurtful looking elbows. You alluded to the earlier with the, the short, sharp strikes, and Harrison's throwing them from all sorts of different angles, making them very unpredictable to defend. And coming and straight through really those hurtful. elbows again. These are some really, really tough shots. Lawrence Andy doing Walker. well to survive. Andy Walker is very, very close to this action. The left elbow, devastating power that's, that's from some, Harrison. He switches to the punches. That is some brutal ground and pound. Harrison is turning this on, and Lawrence is doing very well to survive. Under siege here in the first round. Lawrence with the knee shield, but I think he's going to try and push his opponent away when really he needs to get a bit tighter. Brilliant demonstration of control by Carl Harrison. Training with the likes of Vaughan Lee. Controlling everything as he tries to advance his way to the mount as he is successful in doing so. Not letting up some on G.I. Joe. Is he going to mix an elbow in? There it is, as I called it, straight down the middle. These are tough shots. Coming from high up as well. Lawrence really a struggling here. Amazing that Lawrence isn't marked up more. A barrage of punches, but Lawrence is doing really well to, to use his upper arms across his face to, to actually protect himself. Still very much in this contest. You've got to wonder how many more of those big besieging elbows G.I. Joe Lawrence will be able to ship in. Well, he's fighting back, and I'm glad to see that Andy Walker's let this one go because clearly there's more to come from Joe Lawrence as he takes one right on the point of the chin. Right up Harrison looking there. up, nicely done, and then raining down. Harrison, Huge I pressure. I think there's a cut there. That's it. It's all over, and just as we mentioned, the lack of a cut, a huge one, has opened up some ridiculous... Ridiculously vicious elbows from Carl Harrison. Seriously aggressive assault has stopped this fight. Andy Walker stepping in, and there is a brutal cut to the forehead of G.I. Joe Lawrence, who didn't have a time. He had no, no reprieve there, Ben. He was it, it was literally an assault. It's a barrage of elbows from that top position, and that's when we, we alluded to it. And we said, how many of these elbows can he take before he's either knocked out or cut? And there's the answer. A really, really deep cut that seems to be bleeding an awful lot. The blood came very quickly for me. Often you see that there with cuts around the head. Fighters rush full of adrenaline at the minute. And winner, three minutes and 30 seconds.